Hello ladies and gentlemen and today we'll be talking about an implementation in Python for the Virginia cipher. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the Virginia cipher, well essentially it is a series of interwoven Caesar ciphers and uh, the way that a Caesar cipher works is by applying some offset to the alphabet to try and determine what the letter might be, right? So one useful diagram that I think might be helpful for the, uh, the visualization of the, how this Caesar cipher or Virginia cipher works is by imagining we have our key uh, letter here on the y-axis, so the vertical axis, and uh, the horizontal axis, the x-axis, uh, might be our text letter, right? So say if we got a C in our text, right? But then say if there's a B in our key, then we would want an, uh, to apply an offset of one, right? So if we notice, if we go down from to C, where C and B meet, it will take us to D, and there's the offset of one there, right? Because C, or the next letter along from C, the next letter to the right of C is D, right? Um, so I would encourage that you play around with that, but let's just go on to the implementation. Hopefully it might make things a bit more clear. Uh, so we've got DF cipher. What we want to put into this is a text. We would uh, also want a key word. And we also want a variable that we would use to check whether we are decoding that same piece of text, right? Or that, sorry, a different piece of text. So uh, what I'm going to do is set that to false. So this would be a Boolean, right? And I give it the default value of false, indicating that we just want to code things first, and then we would worry about decoding them after. But if we, for the sake of completeness, we need to also think about the decoding, right? So we've got a coefficient, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to have the initial value of minus one. Um, if, so I'm going to use a ternary uh, condition here, ternary operator, um, if decode, and then else, right? In the case that it's, we don't want to decode it, uh, which might be the case initially, uh, we would want it to be one, right? And we're going to set a value for our cipher, or we're going to give a variable for that, our cipher, and that would be our this. And then we have our key in there. What we're going to do is set that to, and have the initial value of zero, right? And then we're going to say for index in range len. So however long the text might be, um, what we're going to do initially is to uh, try to identify whether the uh, character that we're dealing with is a punctuation or a space. So we're going to say that there's a car letter and this would be equal to our text at the given index, right? So index, and then we're going to close that off and put that over there. Then we're going to say that if it's not an alphabetical character, so if, if not our letter dot is alpha then in that case what we want to do is preserve it all right and so we're going to do that by adding our ciphered uh, on what we're going to add it to our ciphered so we're just going to say that parameter is uh, and then we're going to put a continue here because we don't want the execution to pass this point right now, beyond this point, we would want to be, or we would be assuming that we are dealing with just letters, right? So they can either be an uppercase or a lowercase. But before that, before we get onto that, we're going to work on how we're trying to figure out what the key letter is, right? Because that's going to be important when we want to work out our offset, right? So key letter is equal to our key word, right? At a given index, or sorry, at a given key index, right? And 
once we have used this variable, we would want to iterate it or to increment it. Um, so what we're going to do is redefine key index, right? We're, we're, but we're not just going to add one because we also have to account for the fact that uh, our keyword has a given length, right? So we can't go beyond that length or we can't go up to that length, right? So what we're going to do is get our key index and then we're going to say that it's equal to our key index again. Plus one, and then what we can do is modulo because we don't want it to go beyond our length, right? Modulo the key length of the key, right? Keyword, right? Now I'm going to use another ternary condition here and say that base. Our base is either ord a, which is just an integer, right? We're converting our character to an integer, right? So the ord of a, or lowercase a, is 97, right? And we're going to say that base is equal to that. But what happens if we're dealing with a letter that is uppercase? Then we would want to, so let's just make the condition for that. Dot is lower. else we want it to be another integer that corresponds to the value of the uppercase right so this would be 65 for capital a right lowercase a has the value of or the ord of 97 and the uppercase one uppercase letter is uh, uppercase a i should say is 65 right and uh now, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to find the letter num, right? So, for the sake of consistency, I might just go with car num, right? And what we're going to store in this variable is the ord right, of car letter, right? So, what we're going to do, right? It's because we're going to eventually use this to work out our offset. We can get this and might subtract our base, right? Now, we're going to do the exact same thing for our key, right? To get the key number, right? For the offset, we're going to do ord key uh, letter, letter subtract the base. Now it's important to know that this function would not be able to handle uh, uppercase value, uppercase letters within our key, right? So every key that we would have to put in would be lowercase and what I encourage you to do is maybe you, if you can try to implement that function, right? Or implement that behavior. Um, hopefully it shouldn't be too difficult, right? Uh, just to give a hint, it would just be uh, adding this we're adding this line again, right? But we got to account for uh, whether it's uh, lowercase or uppercase in the value in case in the in the case for the key letter, right? And then we can use that base over here, right? So what we're going to do now is work out our offset. Going to say that is our the addition of our actually. Before we go on to that, right, we'll go into our kina, our karnam, sorry, charnam. And now you might be asking why we uh, why we implemented that coefficient earlier, the variable. So we're going to use that here, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to get this. So add our kina, right? But in the case that it is a we want to decode, right? Then we're doing the exact opposite of the Virginia cipher, we're just subtracting, right? So any number multiplied by negative one is, well, it's it's a negative version of itself, right? So essentially, right? I'll just finish coding this up. And then modulo 26. So essentially, <coughs> What we're going to be doing, right? If if we're not decoding, coefficient would have the value of uh, one, right? 
and then this go we're just multiplying key number by one and any number multiplied by one is always itself right so we don't need to worry about that but in the case that this decode right this condition evaluates to true then this would be my and then the coefficient would be negative one and what we're doing in that case is instead of offsetting forward we'll be offsetting backwards right uh, to try and work out what that text might be right so hopefully that makes a bit more sense and what we could do finally is we just got to get our ciphered plus equal oops yep and offset we're going what we're going to do is just add on the base right what we're going to do right now because this is an integer this doesn't really make sense we're not so ciphered is a string and then we're adding a load of integers onto it it wouldn't python wouldn't like that so we're going to convert this back into a car right then finally we want to return ciphered. and we're just going to test it out Right, so we're going to get a bit of key word. We're going to say that is equal to hippo. And nope. Yep. Okay. And we're going to give it text. I like the smell of freshly basil. And just to be a bit exotic, we're going to add a punctuation mark there. Hopefully, that wouldn't be touched, right? So, cipher. I'm going to put in our keyword or our text, right? D E X D. And our key. Alright, so what have we got here? We got this, right? And notice how the exclamation mark has exclamation mark hasn't been touched, so that's a uh, nice to see. So now we're gonna try to decode it. And so what we're gonna do is put it back that put that in there. So I just copied and pasted it. And we're going to keyword. So we're gonna have a given key and it's gonna be the same. And then what we'd want to do is set decode to true this time, because we're actually decoding, All right? So and hopefully, but uh we got our line of text back right so i put in the code in here or uh, sorry i put in this text it got coded and then we decoded it successfully um so that's pretty much all for this video if you found it helpful at any well if you find it helpful then you should well be sure to smash the like button um and yeah share uh, with your friends uh, if if they're also interested in visionary ciphers and yeah, hope happy coding guys. All right. So, see ya.